Breaking news from the Washington Post. President Trump used, that's the word in the Post article, Vice President Pence in the Ukraine plot. Now, aides to Pence are pushing back within this story, saying he wasn't in on the incriminating part. But here's the reporting. Donald Trump repeatedly involved and used Pence to exert pressure, told Pence not to attend the inauguration of the new Ukrainian president. So this is raising a ton of questions, not only for Pence, but also whether Donald Trump was planning ahead to try to spread around the guilt, if you look at the story that way. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Pompeo has been denying that he knew anything about the collusion call with Ukraine. Well, now a different story. What do you know about those conversations? So you just gave me a report about a IC whistleblower campaign, not, none of which I've seen. Mr. Secretary, do you have any comment on reports you're on the July 25th call with President Zelensky? As for was I on the phone call, I was on the phone call. Uh, the phone call was in the context of now, I guess I've been the Secretary of State for uh, coming on a year and a half. Three stories on three different days. And then there's this new Reuters reporting. The State Department employees were contacted directly by lawmakers or their staff and basically told not to talk to their own State Department counsel. House Democrats are warning Pompeo to, quote, stop intimidating witnesses to, quote, protect Trump. And any effort to intimidate witnesses or prevent them from talking with Congress, they say, is illegal and will constitute evidence of obstruction of the ongoing impeachment inquiry. Joining me on all of this right now is Natasha Bertrand, national security correspondent for Politico, and Kelly Magsman, who served on the National Security Council staff for two presidents, coordinating U.S. policy on Iran and is writing about how you classify calls for two presidents, saying the way the White House is doing it under Trump is alarming. Um, Good evening to both of you, Natasha. A lot of stories breaking right now. I wonder what you think of the Washington Post detailing what looks like a deliberate and long-term effort by President Trump to involve Mike Pence in this plot. Uh, at one point, the story, which we just got, it broke in our hour. It literally says the president, quote, used Pence to tell Ukraine prime minister that U.S. aid was being withheld while demanding more aggressive action. Yeah, Ari, it was always pretty unbelievable to think that the vice president would have no knowledge of what was going on internally. And now what we're learning from The Washington Post is that one of his top aides was actually on that July 25th call, as well as the secretary of state, of course, Mike Pompeo. When when Mike Pence went to Poland last in, in August, I believe it was, and met with Zelensky, he Obviously, at that moment, we had all we already had reported that the aid was being withheld from Ukraine. It was already reported first by Politico, actually, that the president had told his national security team to essentially hold up this two hundred and fifty million dollar security assistance aid to Ukraine. We didn't know exactly why at that moment that it was happening. But it was certainly the backdrop of Pence's meeting with Zelensky. And the big question, of course, that everyone had was, well, is Mike Pence going to bring this up with Zelensky? Is this because of you know what had been on, on in the background up until that point, which was all of Giuliani's efforts to dig up dirt on Biden? And we never really got a full comprehensive readout of their meeting together, except for the press conference that Mike Pence gave with Zelensky, in which he said, we fully support Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera. What so, would be Donald Trump's motivation to try to get Pence directly involved in this? Yeah, it's a good question. It's possible that he wanted to make it seem like it wasn't just him, like it wasn't just his initiative, his own desire to uh, essentially blackmail the Ukrainians into giving him this dirt on, on a political rival. But it's also just, I think, a matter of process that Mike Pence was you know, his aides would be on this call and potentially he just got sucked into this like so many other officials in the White House. Kelly, do you see this as believable that Mike Pence's aides were on a call that apparently set off alarm bells in the White House and led to abuse of the uh, security system, as you've as you've written about, uh, that there was a White House counsel involved, that Rudy Giuliani was popping up in The New York Times and elsewhere talking about Ukraine. And Mike Pence was just just laser focused and out of the loop on everything? <laughs> well, it's not unusual for various uh, National Security Council staff 
uh, and uh, Office of the Vice President's staff to participate in listening in on these phone calls. So that's not an unusual. What is unusual is how this call was handled, uh, how the records of this call were handled, and that is very abnormal from what is normal. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm, ask, what I'm asking you is, do you think it's believable that Mike Pence didn't know anything about it? Why have your aide on the call? And the Post article says in the next day's daily briefing, he would have a readout of the call, uh, and Rudy Giuliani's running around town, and, and Mike Pence doesn't know anything. It's, it's very unlikely that if he had an aide on the call that the vice president was not aware of the content of the call. Uh, spoken with precision. Uh, <laughs> let me give you a chance to, to tell us a little bit about what you've been writing about. This Pence story is blowing up. It's fascinating, in the, especially in the context of impeachment. Um, but you've been giving us uh, a little bit of a broader look at how this stuff works and how you say it's not working in the Trump administration. Explain. Yeah, so I think it's really important for the American people to understand that the rules of classification and the systems to protect that classification serve only to protect the national security interests of the United States. They are not there to protect the president from embarrassing information, politically embarrassing information, and certainly they are not there to protect criminal wrongdoing. So the way this call was handled, to me, was, was raising a ton of alarm bells. First of all, these calls are normally classified at, at levels no more than secret, uh, I think is really most what most foreign, call, foreign calls are, are classified at, and certainly not at the code word top secret level, which is a system and level of classification for our most, most secret intelligence programs. So it tells me that there's some, it was clear that the National Security Council or the National Security Advisor, maybe the White House lawyers, decided that this call's content was sensitive enough and they didn't want it to get out, that they tried to bury it uh, on this separate server. You're basically saying they were abusing the normal rules and that's what makes more evidence of a cover-up? Yeah. I mean, there's ways to restrict... Uh, presidential phone calls. They're actually not widely distributed in the first right. place. Um, the, the National Security Advisor could have restricted the, where it was sent to, whether the State Department got copies, et cetera, et cetera. There was no yeah. national security reason that I can come up with to put it on this very, very secure separate server. Uh, it's, it's really interesting to get your expertise on this as someone who's been there and done it uh, and, and given us your, your straight nonpartisan take. Uh, before we go, Natasha, we did that. We did the breaking news on Mike Pence. Do you have time to discuss Vladimir Putin's chilling stand-up act? <laughs> do, you, do you have that time for us? I do. All right. Take a look. Is Russia, as Robert Miller alleged attempting to influence the 2020 elections in the United States. I'll tell you in a secret, yes, we will definitely intervene. It's a secret so that everybody can laugh and uh, so we'll go big. But don't tell anyone, please. Please don't tell anyone. It's real. Uh, your thoughts, Natasha. I mean, at least he's honest, right? <laughs> this is completely Putin's M.O. He's a master troll, and I think that's part of the reason why he gets along with our president so well. Neither of them takes anything that the U.S. intelligence community says seriously, and especially when it comes to Russia's interference in the 2016 election, it doesn't seem as though Putin has gotten any kind of real message from President Trump uh, to deter him from doing it again in 2020 and beyond. Uh, and these are stories that you have been crossing both from Russia to Ukraine to Mueller uh, to Putin responding to all of that. Um, so it's great to get your expertise as well. Natasha Bertrand Kelly, Magsman, thank you both. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us and we appreciate that.